As more and more scientists peer over the incredible data from the James Webb Space Telescope, more and more mysteries keep appearing. Today we are going to look at six galaxies that should not exist, and then look at some detailed images of galaxies that show a fractal pattern of filaments running through them. In a new report published in Nature, scientists have discovered six galaxies which they claim date to about 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. According to current cosmology based on the Big Bang theory, the first stars formed around 200 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. These would then cluster together with dust and gas to form small galaxies, which would then merge to create larger and larger ones. This process should take a considerable amount of time. So these early galaxies should be small, non-spiral, and contain a small number of stars. What they actually discovered stunned them. These six galaxies were so massive that they simply should not exist. There simply would not be enough time to create them. One was estimated to be 100 billion solar masses, significantly larger than our Milky Way, which is only 60 billion solar masses. How these galaxies formed so large, so close to the start of the Big Bang, is a mystery according to the scientists. They even dubbed them Universe Breakers. They think this might indicate that what is called the Dark Ages may not have been so dark after all, and that the universe may have been awash with star formation far earlier than they thought. At this stage, it is important to realise that what they see in these early galaxies is just a dot of light, and they admit that it may be that some of those objects are obscured supermassive black holes, and what appears to be starlight in the images could be gas and dust getting pulled into the black hole. It may also be that these galaxies are not redshifted at all, but instead are just intrinsically reddened galaxies. Of course, this all assumes the Big Bang model is correct, and that redshift can only be equated with age and distance. If, on the other hand, we just for a moment consider that this may not be true, what could this finding tell us? The idea that these are massive galaxies comes from the idea that they appear highly redshifted. This places them in the Big Bang model at an extreme distance from us. If you project the object that far away from us, it has to become pretty massive for us to be able to see it. But if instead the redshift was not caused by its distance, but was intrinsic to the object, then it would mean that it no longer needs to be at that extreme distance. So what is it then? Holt and Art believed that active galaxies ejected materials which would later form into small quasars and eventually companion galaxies. He discovered many quasars which seemed to be aligned with the axis of a galaxy. So could this be what we are seeing here? In his model, the quasars would be at a higher redshift to the parent galaxy, and over time this redshift would reduce until it matched the parent one. Could it be that they are actually associated with another galaxy at a lower redshift? It's certainly possible. If we examine some of the images of these objects, we can see there are other larger objects in close proximity, but without more detailed analysis of the objects surrounding it, it is mere speculation. Eric Lerner believes in a type of steady state universe. This means that there was no beginning and the universe could be considered infinite. He viewed that light could not travel infinitely, but that over time energy was slowly removed causing it to become redshifted. So highly redshifted objects were indeed objects that are further away, but that distance does not mean that they are younger. So in the case above, what we might be seeing is a more mature galaxy at the edge of the visible universe. It may also be that it is not a galaxy, but instead a highly energetic object. Eric Lerner has also written several papers outlining a concept where black holes are actually gigantic plasmoids. These are formed when large dust clouds contract and ionize. This causes filaments to form which twist and turn around each other. These form a highly compressed plasma torus at the centre, which will eject material at both poles. What is remarkable about this concept is that it comes directly from experiments he conducted in the laboratory. This leads on to the idea of evolution. In conventional cosmology, stars form from collapsed dust. 
which then groups to form smaller galaxies, who merge to become larger. In both Halton Arp and Eric Lerner's model, this is not the case. Stars form out of the compressed material that is formed in the prototype galaxy. So stars form in situ inside the galaxy. Lerner in particular talks about the stars forming along filaments which connect back to the central plasmoid. What evidence is there of these filaments? Well, James Webb has also been looking at the details in several galaxies. Astronomers studying the process of star formation have often been hampered by our inability to peer the dense veil of gas, dust and plasma that surrounds them. The James Webb Space Telescope is capable of peering through these to create some stunning images. Using its high resolution and infrared capabilities, they were able to reveal new details in distant spiral galaxies. This reveals an intricate network of filaments. The spiral arms appear to contain a complex set of overlapping filaments along which stars can be clearly seen. NGC 1433 is a barred spiral galaxy with a double ring structure. The central region has intense star forming activity. The James Webb Space Telescope is able to pierce through the dust region surrounding the younger stars and reveals the intricate detail of the spiral arms in far more detail. Moving on, here is an image of M74, which is also known as the Phantom Galaxy. It is a large spiral galaxy and contains two clearly defined spiral arms, and is often used as an example of a grand design spiral galaxy. The James Webb images reveal these in even more detail, and show a very fractal pattern to the filament structure in the arms of the spiral, which we also see in nature. But we also see this fractal pattern in discharges, specifically cathode spots. When the infrared image is combined with the Hubble image, it reveals the pink pockets of star forming regions along the arms of the spiral arms, which are all interconnected by thin filaments that run throughout the arms almost like a root system in a forest. The final image is IC5332, which is an intermediate spiral galaxy about 30 million light years away. It is also face on from our viewpoint, and we can clearly see the symmetrical spiral arms and the complex web of plasma connecting them like a web, and show the power of the James Webb Space Telescope. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time. 